Hello everyone. Now let's talk about uh, chi-square distribution, which covers the sampling distribution of s square. If we have a normal random variable x, based on the central limit theorem, we know that x bar is also approximately normally distributed with mean mu and a variance sigma square over n. Standardization of the normal random variable x, we got. Uh, standard normal random variable z. Standard normal random variable z is normally distributed with mean 0 and uh, variance 1. To standardize x bar, we minus the mu divided by sigma over square root of n. So this is also a standard normal random variable. So the definition of chi-square distribution is if we have k standard normal random variable and uh, they are independent then the new random variable q which is the sum of squares of this k standard normal random variables then this q is approximately chi squarely distributed with k degree of freedom based on the definition of chi square distribution the sum of the squares of statistic arrows divided by sigma square, that is uh, epsilon i square divided by sigma square, which equals to the deviation of uh, each sample from the population mean and divided by sigma square. As we can see the inside xi minus mu divided by sigma, which is the standard normal random variable. And we sum k of them sum of the squares of k standard normal random variables, zi. Then this is chi-square distributed with k degree of freedom. But this is generally not observable because we don't know the population mean. If we replace the population mean and uh, with the sample mean, then this becomes the sum of the squares of the statistic residues divided by sigma square. This is also approximately chi squarely distributed, but we lost one degree of freedom. That is k minus one degree of freedom. Based on the sum of the squares of the residues, we can obtain the sampling distribution of S square. S square is the sample, uh, sample variance, and the sample size is n, and taken from a normal population with the population variance sigma square. As we see from the previous slides, then the statistic n minus 1 s square over sigma square, which is approximately chi square distributed with v degree of freedom. Here, v equals to n minus 1 degree of freedom. Previous, previous slide, we have k, but uh, we just sum to uh, n. So far, we talk about degree of freedoms. Degree of freedom, DOF, is defined as the number of independent observations minus the number of estimates of population parameters. For example, the sample variance. In the equation to calculate the sample variance, we have n independent observations. And then we have one estimate of the population parameter. So that's why the degree of freedom of sample variance is m minus 1. And this is also the reason why we don't use 1 over m. Instead, we use 1 over the degree of freedom m minus 1. Similarly, for the sampling distribution of s square, we know that n minus 1 s square over sigma square equals to the sum uh, xi minus x bar sigma square. So here we have n independent observations and one estimate of the population parameters. So that is why this is chi squarely distributed with n minus 1 degree of freedom. So simply put, the degree of freedom is the number of independent observations minus the number of estimate of the population parameters. We only have one estimate of population parameters. We can also look at the degree of freedom as if there are n independent observations, x1 to xn. How many observations that are free to vary after sample mean is computed? Suppose you have a sample mean of three observations is eight. And if you already know x1 and x2, x1 equals seven, x2 equals eight. So what is x3? 
Obviously, if you know the sample mean is 8, then x3 must be 9. So x3 is not free to vary. So that is why you have three independent observations. But the degree of freedom after you know the sample mean is n minus 1, that is 3 minus 1 to equals to 2. And the two values, these two values can be any numbers. But the third one is not free to vary if you are given a sample mean. So chi-square distribution is a family of distributions depending on the degree of freedom. So if you vary the degree of freedom, for example, the degree of freedom is 1, this is a distribution of chi-square. And then distribution, uh, when the degree of freedom is 6, this is a this is a distribution, chi-square distribution, for degree of freedom equals to 6. Let's do some exercise. So the first one, probability chi-square greater than this location, xa, and then equals to 5%, we want to find this xa values. And the degree of freedom is 5. Find xa. So because we know the degree of freedom is 5, and this probability, because this is upper tail, this alpha equals to 5%. So let's find out the 5% is right here. And the degree of freedom is uh, 5. So alpha equals to 5% over here. This is the upper tail, or you can call it right tail. And the degree of freedom is 5, so it's 11.07. The second question, chi-square greater than xb, the xb here, and it's 95%. So from this, from this point to the right, they are 95%, and the degree of freedom is 5. Then find xb. So it's 95% to the right, and degree of freedom is 5. So this is 1.14. 1 now the third question, so the probability chi-square greater than 0.554 less than xc equals to 0.94, the degree of freedom is 5, find xc. So probability uh, in this, uh, in between, it actually equals to greater than 0.554 minus probability chi-square greater than xc equals to 0.94. We know if we try to find 0.554, so this is approximately here, at a degree of freedom equals to 5, and 0.554 is here, so it's 99%. So over here, this is 0.99. So then we can have probability chi-square greater than xc equals to 0 0.05. If it is 0 0.05, 5%, then this is xc is actually equals to 5%. 5% is right here, 11.070. So if we look at this again, uh, so we have 0.554 over here. So probability chi-square greater than 0.554 is all the area to the left, uh, to the right. And uh, greater than xc is right here, so that's uh, all the area to the left. This is 0.99%, uh, this is 0.05%. So the area in between is 0.94, so 94%. <clears throat> Let's do an Excel demo together to find out critical values of chi-square distribution. So in order to find out the uh, function of chi-square distribution, we can search chi-square in the help document of Excel. And this returns chi-square distribution. This is a syntax, chi-square.dst. So this x is uh, the value at which you want to evaluate the distribution. For example, the 
and degree of freedom because uh, chi square is a family of distribution. It will change with the degree of freedom. So you gotta specify the degree of freedom. So eleven point zero seven five and true. So this is a cumulative. Cumulative cumulative distribution is the left tail. So this is left tail. And this is right tail. So at this location, 11.07. To the right, this is the right tail. To the left, is the left tail. So this 95% is left tail, and this is the cumulative. So cumulative is up to a location, x, a. And uh, this is a greater than a location. This is a less than a location. So the Excel, actually, this chi-square distribution function give us the cumulative, that is the left tail. But the book give us the right tail. So you gotta make a difference in order to find out the uh, the location eleven point oh seven. We see that this is eleven point oh seven. It should be point five point oh five five percent for right tail. But if we type this function eleven point oh seven five true, this actually give us the left tail. So it will give us ninety five percent. So that's a major difference between Excel function and the uh, the values, the critical values given by the book. The book is right tail, the Excel function is left tail. You gotta understand they are complementing each other, but you can use either way to find out the critical values. In addition to this uh, chi square dot dst, you can also search the inverse function. Inverse function means if you know this locate uh, this area, for example, ninety five percent and a five degree of freedom. You want to find out this location, then you use chi-square inverse. It will automatically give you 11.07 right here. Further, let's do one more exercise. A commercial freezer must hold a selected temperature with little variation. For example, those using the medical school to hold the bio samples. Specification, uh, specifications call for a standard deviation of no more than 4 degrees. That is a variance of 16. A sample of 14 freezers is to be tested. What is the upper limit k for the sample variance, such that the probability exceeding this limit, given the population standard deviation is 4, is less than 5%, that is 0 0.05. The probability sample variance greater than k, the upper limit, that is 5%, uh, is less than 5%. So let's find out what is the critical value at the 5%. So we know that n minus 1 s squared divided by sigma squared is approximately chi squared distributed, but we lost one degree of freedom. So it's about 14 minus 1 because we have 14 freezers. So n minus 1 s squared divided by 16 is greater than this value, where n equals to 14. So 14 minus 1 k over 16 equals to 22.36. So 13, 5 percent, 13 degree, uh, degree of freedom at 5 percent. What is the critical value? Let's find out the 13 degree of freedom at 5 percent. That is uh, chi square dot inverse probability is 5%. 5% is greater than, so it should be 95%, 0 0.95 and 13. So it should be 22.36. So here, why I use 95% instead of 5%? Because Excel, this is left tail, but this is greater than, this is, which is right tail. So we know the critical value at this location is uh, 22.36. So we move this 16 over this uh, to the right side, 23, uh, 22.36 times 16 divided by 14 minus 1, which is approximately 27.52. So 
In conclusion, if S square, if the sample variance from the sample size n equals 14 is greater than 27.52, there is strong evidence to suggest that the population variance exceeds 16.